Hi, everybody. July 31, 2021. Medical schools are now denying biological sex. Professors are apologizing for saying male and female. Students are policing teachers. Activism takes over everything. Medicine, education, policing, all the changes. So, just to point out, Katie Hersog has written really wonderful investigative pieces on CRT. Now on this, I will link below. Uh, I hope that you circulate these very good articles. Uh, now she is focusing on how biological sex is being denied by professors, fearful of being smeared by their students as transphobic. And this is where we are. This is where we are. How has it come to this? Well, when you just accept everything, hey, those in positions of power, the social engineers get to do anything. Radical ideology coming from the left. But nobody really is fighting back with the uh, same amount of power. I don't think most Americans agree with this, but hey, <clears throat> let's just sit back and do nothing. During a recent endocrinology course at a top medical school in the University of California system, a professor stopped mid-lecture to apologize for something he'd said at the beginning of class. I don't want you to think that I am in any way trying to imply anything, and if you can summon some generosity to forgive me, I would really appreciate it. That's a professor talking to his class? Students? Well, a recording was provided by a student to Katie to write this piece. Again, I'm very sorry for that. It was certainly not my intention to offend anyone. The worst thing that I can do as a human being is be offensive. If you're not offending, you're not telling the truth, especially true today. His offense, using the term pregnant women. I said when a woman is pregnant, which implies that only women can get pregnant, and I most sincerely apologize to all of you. I'll link below to the article. You can read it. That's right. Some of the country's top medical students are being taught that humans are not like other mammals, a species comprising two sexes. The notion of sex they are learning is just a man-made creation. Wow. It's just a, it's a man-made construct. It's a social construct. It's, we made it up. Really? Man, I've gone 62 years Believing that I'm a woman. And I, well, am. Uh, but now, I guess, in certain circles, I couldn't even say that. Oh, wow. I'm going to be dead soon. Not going along with this. It is literally destroying people. Now, I want to remind everyone of that New World Order insider, uh, the recollections of Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan in 1988 of a lecture given by Dr. Richard Day back in 1969. Dr. Day was a professor of pediatrics at Mount Sinai Medical School in New York, and he also served 
as the medical director of Planned Parenthood Federation of America, which leads me to believe that he was a eugenicist. Well, that lecture that Dr. Dunnigan, who was a student of Dr. Day, Dr. Dunnigan attended that lecture, and Dr. Day spent the entire lecture telling the audience members of what was going to be happening in the United States. And you know what? Everything that was talked about has pretty much come true. Okay, New World Order plans. I will link below. If you don't know anything about this, I actually have videos on my channel about it. Um, reading a whole lot of these sections. It's long. Um, but the contents, just look at the contents. You know, everything is in place and nobody can stop us now. People will have to get used to change. Medical schools no longer teaching biological sex. The real and the stated goals, population control, permission to have babies, redirecting the purpose of sex. Oh, we've got sex education as a tool of world government. Tax-funded abortion as population control, encouraging homosexuality, technology, families to diminish in importance, euthanasia, and the demise pill. Remember during the Obama years talking about the demise pill? Uh, limiting access to affordable medical care. Well, <laughs> that sure has come true. Um, new difficult to diagnose and untreatable diseases. Well, we have that pandemic and the coronavirus. Oh, my God, the fight, the war against that virus has been pretty intense, and we can't seem to beat it. But untreatable, I mean, um, difficult to diagnose. Boy, the comments in the last 12 years from a lot of you. And myself included, um, the medical profession seems to have uh, fallen off their pedestal. They're no longer the god that we used to believe, the white coat. Oh, my God, I bow down to that white coat. You are so brilliant. Uh-uh. They don't seem to be able to diagnose much anymore. And when they do, they often get it wrong. Um, suppressing cancer cures as a means of population control, inducing heart attacks, uh, education as a tool for accelerating onset of puberty and evolution, blending all religions, the old religion will have to go, changing the Bible through revisions of key words, the churches will help us, all of this has come true, restructuring education as a tool of indoctrination. Oh. Well, a whole lot of parents are out there fighting the indoctrination. More time in schools, but they won't learn anything. Controlling who has access to information. Some of these points I'm going to be <clears throat> showing you that it's come true. Showing you in this video. Schools as the hub of the community. Books will disappear from the libraries. Changing laws. The encouragement of drug abuse to create a jungle atmosphere. Crime used to manage society. The need for more jails. Restrictions on travel. Alcohol abuse. The encouragement of alcohol abuse. And no more security. Curtailment of American industrial preeminence. Shifting populations and economies, tearing the social roots. Sports as a tool of social change, sex and violence inculcated through entertainment, travel restrictions, implanted IDs, food control, weather control. Know how people respond, making them do what you want. See, that's one of the big, big problems. Most people have no clue who they are. But the powers that be, they do know you. They know about psychology. They know how to manipulate you. And if you don't know you, 
your prey to them. That's why for 12 years, I have said the most important thing, the solution resides inside you. Every individual needs to know who they are, needs to resolve all of those uh, unresolved issues from your past. And if you don't do that, then you don't even know what the hell motivates you. You don't know why you've made the decisions that you have made. You don't understand your own behavior, but others do. <sighs> Falsified scientific research. Terrorism, financial control. You know, to say this in 1969, a lot of these things in 1969, this man knew what was coming. Home ownership, a thing of the past. The arrival of the totalitarian global system. So, uh, I'm going to skip a lot of this, but I just want to go down to uh, a few paragraphs. Everything is in place and nobody can stop us now. Some of you will think, I'm talking about communism. Well, what I'm talking, this is Dr. Day. Some of you will think I'm talking about communism. <clears throat> well, what I'm talking about is much bigger than communism. At that time, he indicated that there is much more cooperation between the East and the West than people realize. 1969, duck and cover. Although I think it was earlier than 69, duck and cover. Oh my God. The Soviet Union, they want to drop a nuclear bomb on us. Duck and cover. Boomers. That was our fear. Uh, the fear bombs on the baby boomers. And all of it was a staged play. Most people don't understand how governments operate, and even people in high positions in governments, including our own, don't really understand how and where decisions are made. He quite accurately said there would be changes that would be very surprising and in some ways difficult for people to accept. Hmm medical schools denying biological sex. People will have to get used to change. Okay. Um, people will have to get used to the idea of change, so used to change that they'll be expecting change. Nothing will be permanent. This often came out in the context of a society where people seemed to have no roots or moorings, but would be passively willing to accept change simply because it was all they had ever known. This was sort of in contrast to generations of people until this time where certain things you expected to be and remain in place as reference points for your life so change was to be brought about, change was to be anticipated and, and expected and accepted, no questions asked. And another comment Dr. Day made was, people are too trusting, people don't ask the right questions, and sometimes he kind of inferred that being too trusting was being dumb. Well. At this point, it certainly is. So, this is also important. The real and the stated goals. Dr. Day said, everything has two purposes. One, the ostensible purpose, which will make it acceptable to people. And the second is the real purpose, which would further the goals of establishing the new system. If people don't look into 
all of those in positions of power, if they don't for themselves verify what they say, which means you hear them, and then you check out what they're talking about, like the pandemic, like climate change, you check these things out. You have to find out the truth about what they're saying. Sometimes you can just watch them because very often they will say something and then turn around and do the exact opposite. So, the idea that we're just a fabulous, innocent population too trusting? Sorry, there's more behind the individual who's just sitting back and believing all of these lies. Nothing could be more obvious today. Nothing could be more obvious that we are being grossly lied to and that, yeah, what we hear and what they do are two very different things. So, here. Now, I'm going to show you the protests and a whole lot, but very important. Okay. Talk about controlling information, which I just read. Controlling information. The shadow state Twitter suspends commentator for criticizing vaccine policies. Twitter's action against political commentator Dave Rubin is an example of how these companies are now dispensing with any pretense in actively barring criticism of government policies and viewpoints. If you don't know this, and you're still one of them who say, well, they're a private company, they get to do what they, you have some research to do. I've done some of that research and it's on my channel. How these social media companies are connected to our government and our government uses these social media companies to destroy our First Amendment right to, you know, that we shouldn't even have any document that says you have the right to speak freely. Think about it. Okay, so Ruben was locked out under the common misinformation claim by Twitter. His tweet was an opinion based on demonstrably true facts. Here's his tweet. They want a federal vaccine mandate for vaccines which are clearly not working as promised just weeks ago. People are getting and transmitting COVID despite vax. Plus now they're prepping us for booster shots. A sane society would take a pause. We do not live in a sane society. Oh my God. Get rid of that. Disappear that information. It may, it may inspire critical thinking. Well, we've been hearing from the CDC themselves. We've been hearing from the experts themselves information that actually corroborates or verifies what, what Dave Rubin said. So, isn't this very interesting? Twitter declared his tweet to be a violation of its policy on spreading misleading and potentially harmful information related to COVID-19. <laughs> really? Well, even if you present information that you got from the approved experts, you can still get disappeared. Well, this just, just now, I see Alex Berenson, who, former New York Times science writer, he too, Twitter suspends science writer 
after he posts results of Pfizer clinical test. Pfizer, science writer from New York Times, no longer. He left the New York Times because, well, why? <clears throat> He's one of those that said, I can't do this anymore. You know, essentially, all of these uh, news outlets are telling their journalists what they can and what they cannot write. A few have some integrity and leave, like Alex Berenson. Okay. Um, all he did was cite a cl the results of a clinical trial by Pfizer and rose questions about any vaccine mandate. Mandates are coming. You can be assured of that. In the meantime, the White House accused both the White, Washington Post and New York Times of irresponsible reporting on COVID. But Twitter didn't suspend them. Twitter is unwilling to let people read or discuss view, viewpoints that it disagrees with as a corporation. Many on the left, however, have embraced the concept of corporate speech and censorship. It turns out that the problem with censorship for many on the left has been the failure to censor views that they oppose. With the right censors at work, the free speech concerns have been set aside. As long as you oppose what I consider to be wrong and not a good viewpoint, I'm with you, Twitter. That's how unwise and immature are the American people. Berenson has been effectively confined to Substack by big tech. He posts, uh, he posted the results published by Pfizer of its own clinical data the research showed little difference in mortality between those in the trial with a vaccine and those given a placebo. I understand now that even, you know, I could go down, seeing all of these people going down on other social media uh, sites that, yep, I could go down. Anybody can go down if you post what they don't want you to post. So here it is. Um, this is what he posted. Pivotal clinical trial for Pfizer COVID vaccine. And I'm not even going to read you know, the what apparently they don't want you to know. So you can read it. Are you reading it? You done? Can I move on? If not, go back, pause the video and read it. So, this also is happening. Twitter suspends other audit accounts. Audit War Room. Wisconsin, Nevada, Georgia, Pennsylvania. Accounts suspended. You cannot know the truth about that election. You cannot know the truth of what was going on, you know, and it truly is, it's a remarkable display of adults who never grew up and they, they actually believe that they have a right to control other people. They have a right to control information. They have a right to bully, control, and disappear. These are adults who are working for that elite that is changing the world into a totalitarian global system. But also, 
suspends Arizona audit account. Um, Canada Trudeau liberals push radical internet censorship bill, censorship bill that could fine Canadians for hate speech. What is hate? It's so vague. Well, I know that many have been fighting this internet bill, but we don't have enough people, you know, our respective fellow citizens in our countries to fight. So you get some pushback. They don't stop. That's, that's the problem with evil. It never stops. It will run over you. It will destroy you. It has no limits. And they keep at it. I guess nothing motivates like evil with these people. California restaurant requires proof of being unvaccinated for service. <laughs> Love it. Huntington Beach. Uh, this restaurant... There you go. Tony Roman. Our American way of life is under attack. Well, sure is. And you can click on the link below. I don't know the name of the restaurant, even if he gives the name. Um, but this is what needs to be done for those business owners that understand what's going on and does not want to consent to the tyranny. Non-compliance. But when you have the majority complying, you're screwed. Listen to this. Years old and up, and look, I'm a parent. My kids went to New York City Public Schools. If my kids were going to school in September, I would be running to get them vaccinated right now. And, and like was said a moment ago, you know, we used to do this as parents all the time for a variety of vaccinations. We've got to shake people at this point and say, come on now. We tried voluntary. You know, we could not have been more kind and compassionate as a country. Free testing everywhere you turn, incentives, friendly, warm embrace. The voluntary phase is over. We can keep doing those things. I'm not saying shut it down. I'm saying voluntary alone doesn't work. It's time for mandates because of years old. It's time for mandates. More and more of these psychopathic creatures are coming out saying it's time for mandates. But did you hear him? We couldn't have been more kind and compassionate and warm embrace. What? Are <laughs> it's unfortunate that most Americans don't know anything about the characteristics of the very sick and twisted psychopath or narcissist, pathological. They say the mo most outrageous, you know, loving things about themselves while they're destroying you. I love you. I'm so warm. I'm so compassionate. I'm so kind. Smashed in the face. Are you? Mandates are coming. So while we kind of sit around, others aren't. What happens when doctors can't tell the truth? Your medical system gets destroyed. Whole areas of research are off limits. Top physicians treat patients based on their race. And, oh my God. So they're giving up biological sex and you know now uh, top physicians or doctors, hospitals, uh, medical centers around the country are um, they're, they accept patients based on race. Um, seems a little discriminatory, but, well, when you are in a nation that is ever-changing, this is what we get. Um, 
Informed consent is gone. Uh, so, yeah, we're absolutely 100% done, cooked. You know, fighting after the fact doesn't really work. When the tyrants get control, they don't let go of it. Now, there are so many protests around the world. Cuba, um, I, I can't because of time. Um, you might want to check some of these out. Tunis demonstrations. Well, Cuba, you know what the demonstrations are. I wanted to play this because I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to. Listen to this. New economic sanctions to punish the Cuban dictatorship. Those sanctions target Cuba's National Revolutionary Police and the two top officials with that organization. The president is meeting with Cuban American leaders at the White House to discuss a response to recent social protests on the island. The administration has been weighing additional penalties as well as other initiatives to open up internet, open up internet access to the Cuban citizens. Since the protests began, today's meeting comes almost three weeks after people took to the streets in Havana and other Cuban cities and towns to protest vaccine shortages, food shortages, power outages, and draconian government policies. And that was the last, really? The first one? Vaccine access? Freedom. Freedom is what they want. Freedom. It's what we all want. Tunis, demonstrations over economy and health system. Well, on these news things, read what's in the description, but they are out there. It's 122 degrees. They're protesting, and they're protesting restrictions on their life based on our pandemic. People want freedom. You know, people are protesting bike lanes. And this, um, oh, I'm not entirely sure where, oh, San Diego. Hi, Dan, good evening. Good evening. I don't know if you remember the last time we were here. It was a few weeks ago, and this was kind of a blank slate. There weren't really any lines. There wasn't any bollards, if you will, the little separator deals. But uh, take a look now. Oh, yes, in the middle of the night, this was all completed. And I was just told by business owners it did happen in the middle of the night, like in the middle of the night. Uh, so anyway, take a look at this. I mean, it's kind of pretty, actually, uh, if you look at it. Uh, the problem is, is that the parking, about 500 spots, like you said, are gone. And as a result of putting in the bike lanes, what they did was, and if you can show over to the right, you can see there's like one or two here and one or two there, where they actually put on the outside of the bike lanes. You can see there's three down there, there's one here. And as you go down, there's just one every once in a while. Um, so I don't know, I guess in front of that business, that the massage place right here, one customer can go in at a time. But clearly there are a lot of people out here who are very upset. Um, not the least of which for the fact that they weren't included in this whole decision. And there's already a bike lane three blocks over that was perfectly ready to go and part of the original master plan. So people are shaking their heads and saying, what really is happening here? And I think they've come to a conclusion, which I'm going to share with you right now. Take a look. When the politicians over at City Hall ignore the will of the people, sometimes those people take to the streets and let them know about it. Here in North Park, this has been a three-year battle over bike lanes, and from the looks of it, that battle appears to be almost over. Today we're out here because the posts have gone up on both sides of the street. 
Um, what it's done is basically turn 30th Street into a speedway. 30th Street in North Park has essentially become a political guinea pig, an experiment in social engineering. 500 parking spots removed, protected bike lanes installed. As the theory goes, this will force people out of their cars and onto bicycles, all in the name of climate change. The city's preaching about environmental and climate action plan and all those things, but when you take away parking and people drive, have to drive farther, does that improve the climate action, the ozone and all the emissions? I don't think so. Two, two, two objectives. You hear your politician speak, the ostensible reason, we're protecting your health, it's climate change, and then the real reason, which you have to research. This was happening in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. And most in Great Barrington, the residents, I would say, having talked to some of them, some were my friends, they didn't even know how their government had been restructured. You know, that town government, they didn't even understand that the decisions that were being made in Great Barrington were further away. They thought all the decisions were being made just in that town. No, further away, that's my um, brief uh, explanation of what was going on. Um, but, yeah, these decisions are being made not by you know, the people that you sit in these halls and listen to. They don't tell you the truth. They're the puppet that bring about the changes that those behind the curtain want to install a totalitarian regime. regime. They want you out of your cars. They don't want you having any independence. No more cars. That's coming. You don't have a car? You don't travel very far. You got your bike? Okay, this is... Um, Parents protesting school masks. This is in Georgia. The Delta variant giving new life to the pandemic and to protesters. Holly Terry, among the parents who are opposed to Gwinnett County Schools and other school systems reinstating mask mandates. We do not co-parent with the CDC. We don't co-parent with our school district. These are our children, and we are more than capable of making these medical decisions. The Delta variant so contagious. Hospitalizations are up 50% in Georgia. Ah. All right, there's going to be a part two just showing a whole lot of protests. The links are below.